obviously big change for, for all the teams, uh, including ourselves. Uh, I think uh, the last couple of years we always knew kind of uh, what to expect, uh, which is very different this year. Um, therefore, I think it's difficult to have any sorts of uh, expectations. I think the most important is once we get going to understand the car, uh, to understand what it needs and then hopefully build on, uh, build on to that. So um, at the moment, I would say expectations are fairly low, but surely once you realize that you've got a good car, hopefully, uh, yeah, you, you want to make sure you, you race in the same area as we did uh, the last four years. Generally, you always try to uh, prepare as much as you can. Uh, this year, obviously, with so many new challenges, uh, it's a little bit difficult to prepare for the unknown, but uh, you try to understand as much as possible uh, before you start. Um, so uh, at the moment, it might be a little bit more guessing uh, rather than uh, yeah, knowing what is coming because we haven't driven it with the new engine, we haven't driven uh, the new car. So um, yeah, we try to obviously prepare as much as we can. and. Uh, yeah, we'll find out more after the first couple of tests and after the first Grand Prix. I think because of the big changes, uh, the drivers will have to adapt their driving style. Um, you will have to, yeah, uh, watch after, uh, you know, look after the car, look after your fuel situation. So, uh, yeah, it might be a little bit different in the races compared to what we used to. Um, I think everybody will get used to it, but uh, surely it will take some some time to, to adapt and uh, certainly if you look at, across the weekend it will uh, require the driver to yeah, simply adapt to, to what, uh, what needs to be done. Uh, for sure in qualifying you will try to go as fast as possible whereas in the race, given on the situation, who you race, where you are in the race, uh, you'll have to yeah, save fuel, um, prepare an attack, uh, maybe lapse in, a, in advance, so we'll see. Being a part of the team, uh, you realize how um, big the changes are um, that we will face for, for this season. And as always, you know, the bigger the changes, uh, the more time for everybody, drivers, engineers, uh, people in the factory, etc., to, to adapt new challenges. And uh, therefore, I think we will probably see more retirements than that uh, we're used to uh, in the past, because obviously we understood the cars fairly well. Um, that's for all the teams. And now, Everything is new, so um, I think I think the yeah that uh, mistakes will happen um, for everyone. The question is who does the least mistakes, and uh, yeah, obviously the target is not to do the same mistakes twice. But uh, surely we will all have to learn, and uh, therefore you know um, there will be things happening. Uh, I'm sure, but um, I think it's, it's normal after such a, a big change. Well, I think generally everything is possible, but uh, obviously we, have, we, are not, we are on an incredible run, uh, winning the last four titles consecutively. Um, obviously, we try to do it again this year uh, to make it five, uh, just like Michael did. But um, yeah, as I said, at the moment, the expectations are fairly low because we, yeah, we don't know what's coming. And I think uh, it's a little bit the same for all the other teams. So surely we had a good run, but um, now it's a yeah, complete blank sheet uh, of, of paper, so um, yeah, we'll have to, to wait and see, wait the first couple of races, see where we are, see how, how big the trouble is uh, for us and the others, and then uh, yeah, we go from there. Well, I'm really looking forward to yeah, race against Daniel uh, in the same team. Uh, obviously, we have a little bit the sim a similar background coming from, uh, yeah, the Red Bull family from early on in our career and uh, yes yeah, I think it's nice nice for him to get the chance uh, and I'm sure he will try his best to give me a hard time um, so uh, yeah I obviously know him a little bit but uh, surely we get uh, get to know him a lot a lot more this year I think having a new teammate generally doesn't doesn't really change that much in the end. Uh, it's a different name, <laughs> a different guy, but um, I think you know the team is used to obviously uh, to work with with uh, different drivers. And uh, surely you know the first year might be difficult for him, for the team, just to get to know each other. So I might have a little bit of an advantage there. But on the other hand, you know he's he's very talented, he's very bright. So 
I'm sure he will adapt very quickly. And I'm, I'm, yeah, as as much as I know the team, uh, you know, they will help him as much as possible, so that uh, in the end we are, you know, uh, the strongest team that uh, that we can be. It's not fair to pick a best best moment. Uh, obviously, I had now uh, five seasons with uh, with Red Bull Racing. Um, four incredible ones where we won the championship, but also our first one was uh, yeah very incredible. So um, I think there's a couple of moments that stand out. The first win in China, uh, weather was miserable, but um, yeah we had a one-two finish and it was the first win for the team. Um, only my second win. So um, if you look back to the day, it just was. Uh, yeah, incredible, you know, uh, everybody was jumping up and down and uh, for hours and it was really, really cool. Um, yeah, winning the first time in Monaco with uh, with Mark at the time, I finished second. Uh, but generally, I think the Monaco, Monaco Grand Prix for every driver and for every team is something very, very special. Uh, and I remember everybody jumped in the pool straight after. So, yeah, winning the championship in Abu Dhabi or generally uh, sealing the championship the last four years was always uh, very special and we had some, some very good time afterwards. Uh, yeah, doesn't matter where, Abu Dhabi or karaoke bar in Japan. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, there's a lot of uh, memories that uh, yeah, will stay there forever. Obviously, you've been in that situation where you know you come back after after the break and you get to to meet the people again and uh, you have a, a look at the at the car, you know, the new car. But this year, obviously, uh, it's a very different look. The car looks very different, especially uh, underneath. So um, there's a lot going on. Uh, I think the technology behind is really really complex. So uh, I, I think for all the engineers, it's very difficult to understand everything uh, because everything is linked. For the drivers, even harder, <laughs> because we haven't been to school so long. So, um, but it's it's fascinating to see how everything works and uh, you know to understand a little bit um, how things come together. Uh, but obviously, uh, it's a lot more work for the mechanics. Uh, it's a lot more complex for for everyone that that uh, works on the car. So, it's a it's a very big challenge. Um, so, yeah, at the moment, I, I think it's difficult to predict. But we'll see when we get to the first race. Yeah, obviously we all had the opportunity uh, for our future to pick uh, our number. Um, I'm very happy to yeah, go into the season with number one, uh, because obviously that means that we won the championship the year before. But other than that, I picked number five. Uh, very simple, because first time I won the championship in Formula One, I had number five on the car. Uh, generally, number five, I think, was very successful in Formula One. Uh, Nigel won the championship, Michael won the championship uh, with number five. Um, and I had a yeah I have a very good memory to number five uh, on on my go kart. I had a very very good season uh, back in 2001, with a lot of wins. So um, yeah, I just seem to like the history of number five. I think the season ahead is is going to be you know very challenging but very exciting. You know, it's something I've. Uh, been looking forward to for, for a few months now, that's for sure. Uh, my whole life in a way as well. But um, yeah, for, for me, it's, it's, it's another big step in my career. But um, with all the rule changes, you know, for the team as well, it's, you know, exploring new grounds. So challenging for everyone, but I'm sure uh, we're all ready and excited. It's a good time to, um, I think, change change team and, and come in with all the, you know, the other changes happening in F1, you know, in 2014. So uh, it's, it's, you know, I think probably going to level things out and, and give me, a, you know, the best chance possible to shine, I hope. I'm really excited to be alongside Seb. Um, this year, you know, he's, he's achieved so much in, in so little time as well. Um, but to be a four time world champion, you know, no matter what the circumstance, no matter how long he's been doing it, um, is an amazing thing. And, and I have a lot of respect for that and a lot of respect for him. So I'm just really looking forward to learning as much as I can and hopefully, uh, you know, challenging him, of course, you know, I want to want to try and uh, get some success. But um, to do that, first, I have to respect him and then go forward from there.
Seb and I were both part of the, the Red Bull Junior team. Um, we came up, you know, from, from a pretty young age uh, in the Red Bull program. And, uh, you know, so through that, we spent some time together, um, even a little bit before F1. But um, yeah, you know, we've, we've done a bit, you know, a few dinners, a few functions here and there. Um, but I'm sure we'll get to know each other a bit better this year. So the honey badger. Um, I have it on my crash helmet. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an animal I discovered a few years ago. Um, it's known to be probably the fe most fearless animal in the animal kingdom. So it's, it's very, you know, you look at it and, and some pictures of it look quite cute and cuddly and, you know, it seems pretty laid back. But um, as soon as it, it wants something or, you know, someone crosses his territory in a way he doesn't like, he turns into a bit of a savage um, and he'll go after anything. You know, he'll go after pythons, uh, tigers, whatever it can. Um, yeah, so he turns very quickly, but he's a good guy. Definitely, you know, prepared and excited for Australia. Uh, it's going to be, you know, I'm sure something like I, I've never experienced before. Um, you know, now being the, the sole Australian driver and, and moving up to you know, the, the top team on the grid. There's going to be, you know, even more attention uh, around me. I'm, I'm aware of that, but I just have to use it to, you know, to my advantage. There's going to be a lot of positive energy, I'm sure, um, and I have to surround that with myself and uh, then use it on track. So looking forward to it all. Uh, expectations is honestly not really a word I, I like or like to use so much. I think the way I see it is instead of having expectations, I don't want any regrets. Um, so I want to finish the year, hopefully with, with some victories, that would be great. Um, but just to leave everything on the table, that's, that's, my, that's my aim. Number three on my car. Um, it was the first number given to me when I, was, uh, when I started racing. So when I applied at my, my local kart club, they sent back in the mail, you know, my, my driver, well, my karting license and, and the number three. And uh, then it just stayed with me pretty much all through karting. Um, and I was also a fan of uh, Dale Earnhardt. Uh, he, he was very famous for his number three in, in NASCAR for many years. So um, yeah, there's a few things going for it, which uh, I'm happy about. I saw the, the new car today, um, all the team around it. It was, um, it was an, an exciting moment, definitely. You know, it gives me a little bit of goosebumps, you know, knowing that now that ex world champion, you know, winning car is, is, is mine um, to use to my full potential this year. So that's, that's very exciting. And um, yeah, definitely a, a proud moment. Well, the reset button has essentially been pressed for uh, the 2014 with a big regulation change. So it's a clean sheet of paper and um, it's an opportunity for the design teams to get in their teeth into a new challenge. But of course, the biggest challenge is in the power unit. And uh, that's where we rely heavily on our engine partner, Renault, um, to uh, make sure that we have a power unit that is uh, competitive with our rivals, which we've got every confidence they will have. I think the new regulations are going to have an effect on racing this season. Um, it's going to be a different type of racing because fuel economy is now crucial as we're limited to 100 kilos of fuel to start a Grand Prix with. So there's going to be a much more tactical approach um, to the racing and um, that's going to be another challenge for the teams and drivers. I think it's going to take a few races for the, um, the racing to settle down before people work out what the optimum strategy is to run a Grand Prix are. So I think it's probably going to take four or five races until we sort of see a pattern start to emerge. I think it's dangerous sometimes to be overconfident that you have all the elements in place for the start of any season and um, you know we've enjoyed great continuity the last few years and uh, you know we've got a strong driver lineup we've got a strong technical lineup 
and we've got great strength and depth within the team. But uh, you can't take anything for granted and Formula One, um, like any sport, can be unpredictable at times. Uh, well, Daniel, as the new boy on the team, is um, you know he's going to be on a steep learning curve. He's going to be benchmarked against Sebastian, who obviously is a full times reigning world champion, is the benchmark in Formula One, and uh, that's going to be tough for Daniel. But I think he's approaching it with exactly the right attitude. He's looking to learn and benefit from um, you know how Sebastian operates, and fundamentally, he's very fast. He's a very quick racing driver, and um, I think Daniel could really you know throw up some. Uh, surprise results this year and I think he uh, has a, the real potential to be a, a star of the future. I think the key elements this year will be uh, obviously the engine is going to be a crucial factor. I think reliability of the power units is going to be critical and I think that uh, obviously whoever has the most uh, powerful reliable power unit is probably going to come out on on top so it's a game changer in many respects the regulations for this year but um, we look forward to the challenge the atmosphere in the team is is excellent at the moment obviously we've been riding on a the crest of a wave over the last four years and um, there's a great determination to see that continue into 2014 it's been the most intense winter we've ever had. We've produced the car in the shortest possible amount of time um, through the design and manufacturing process and it's uh, been fantastic to see the teamwork operating the way it has. The main focus is obviously to approach each uh, event and get the best out of each event. It's a, a long season, a long calendar and um, it's important to optimize your chances at each individual race, which is the way we've conducted ourselves previously and will be no different this year. Well, it's the, the team's 10th season, but um, there's so many highlights from the previous nine, whether it's winning our first world championship in, in Abu Dhabi, whether it's our first Grand Prix victory with a one-two finish in China in 2009, any of the constructors championships any of the drivers championships and some of the fantastic race wins that we've achieved along the way as well so there's so many too many to um too many to mention this season we've got two big regulation changes the first one which we've known for some time is the engine change um, we've gone from the normally aspirated 18,000 rpm V8s to a turbocharged 1.6 litre V6 um, with a much higher electrical content, so curves in, in layman's terms, and a very strict fuel consumption. Uh, so not only have a 100 kilos maximum fuel for the race, but we also have a maximum consumption or flow rate, if you like. Um, the old engines for reference we're using around 160 kilos, so it's a, a big reduction in fuel. And that, of course, means that there'll be a lot of strategy in the race. Most of the races we anticipate will be fuel capacity limited. So we'll have to save fuel through the race, which will mean different driving styles, um, compromising lap time at times to save fuel, which obviously means how you then use your remaining fuel. Do you, do you go out? quick at the start, try and break away and then save fuel? Do you save fuel early in the race and try and sprint later in the race? All those sorts of things um, will come into play. So I think it's a big technical challenge. Um, they're hugely complicated engines compared to the V8s to install, where the V8s were sort of a, a very well-known package. These engines, um, the engine itself is easy enough to install, but then of course you've got the turbocharger, the intercoolers, um, the electrical side in terms of the motor generator units, where the batteries, much bigger batteries. Um, bigger batteries mean bigger conditioning boxes for the batteries. It also means more cooling for those batteries, so that means more radiators on top. So roughly speaking, the radiator area on the car is double compared to a V8. Um, and that, of course, is another challenge, how you, how you cool the car with such a big heat rejection requirement 
So it really is a, a big change for us. Um, the biggest engine change, without doubt, that we've had since the turbos disappeared in the late 80s. Um, arguably much bigger because of all the electrical side of it. So we've got that to cope with. Um, obviously, Renault, our partner, are the big players there in terms of the package itself. Our job is to install this in the, the neatest and most performant way we can. Um, and on top of that, the second big change is really revolve around the aerodynamics. What well, sounds quite a small change, which is a, a 75 millimetres, that's roughly three inches reduction in um, the width of the wing on each side. And that was done to reduce the chances of a wing being knocked off um, when two cars touch in a, a sort of um, dogfight, if you like. Um, but it has a big aerodynamic effect. Before, the, the front wing end plate allowed us to put the flow off the tip of the wing outside of the front wheel. Now the front end plate's right in front of the front wheel. It's in about the worst possible place. It's not inside, it's not outside. And that means that the majority of the flow now stagnates in front of the front wheel. A little bit of it finds its way outside, the rest comes inside and in doing so makes quite a mess. The front wheel wake effectively, or the combination front wing and front wheel wake becomes much bigger. And that causes all sorts of problems downstream as you approach the side pod and the diffuser. On top of that, we have a, a lowered nose, which I think is um, supposedly be done on the grounds of safety. It's, it's meant to reduce the chances of a car being launched if one car hits another in the manner that, for instance, when um, Mark Webber went up the back of Coverline in Valencia a few years ago. Whether it may really makes a difference or not, I think is a, a much more moot point, because it's been deemed that it's safer, so that's what we've had to go for. It's a funny regulation, basically what the regulation does is call for a maximum side view height, so it defines the, the top edge and side view. And then on top of that, there's a area 50 millimetres behind the front of the nose, um, which we have to meet, and that area is quite low down, much lower than the side view. So what you end up, of course, with is almost two noses, one which is the main bulk of the nose, which is um, to this minimum side view height, and then almost a, a bulb sticking out from that to satisfy the, the area rule much lower down. So I think to varying degrees, I would imagine everybody's going to have these rather ugly and ungainly noses, which I think is a, an awful shame. The, to me, aesthetics of a Formula One car is important. It, the car should look good, and I think um, not many of the owners of these noses could, could really love them. Regulation changes which involve um, aerodynamic changes, and therefore how you deal with those aerodynamic changes, and how you try to make sure that the mechanical package in the tyres work in harm with those aerodynamic changes is always a challenge. Um, so I think the, the rule changes we've had on the aerodynamics certainly present new challenges, there's no doubt about that. Um, some trepidation of course, we had, a, we had a competitive car at the end of last season. Um, with these big changes, that all is history and it's, it's going to be a challenge of who comes up with the best solutions for these new regulations. Last season was a, um, whilst it appeared very easy in terms of the number of wins and the number of points we had at the end of the year, um, the sort of critical area around August last year, then it was a very tight battle. Um, Mercedes seemed to be having good impetus. Ferrari and Fernando had had a very good start to the season and they certainly couldn't be ignored. So we were feeling far from comfortable as it was going to be an easy ride through the rest of the year to the championship. So we put a lot of effort into the development of RB9, last year's car, um, through June, July, August, September. Inevitably that brings with it the compromises that we of course have limited resources and while we're developing RB9 then that meant that work wasn't going into the new car RB10 which Given the magnitude of the regulation changes that we've 
had over the winter was without doubt a, a compromise compared to what we'd have ideally liked to do. But we, we felt that we needed to do that to try and win the championship we were in and then handle the, um, if you like, the pressures of time scales that resulted from that decision. Um, so I think time really has been our, our biggest battle that we haven't had the time to do as much research as we'd have ideally liked um, on the background of the car before we had to commit to the, to the fundamental hardware of monocoque and gearbox case. The regulation changes in qualifying will probably be less of an effect in terms of things like strategy because the fuel consumption will be limited. Um, the total fuel used is irrelevant for qualifying. And then the, the electrical uses, if you like, the CARES usage is, is simply using programmes to optimise. So I don't think regulation changes in terms of the engine will have a, a big effect from a strategy point of view. It may well be that some engines perform better in terms of their qualifying because fuel consumption is less of an issue than it is in the race. Equally, obviously there's all the other factors that of course come into play like tyre usage. So we might very well have a similar case to last year where some cars are easy on their tyres and perhaps then struggle to warm them up and get them to work properly in qualifying, but have a, a very good race pace and vice versa. I think early races um, could see quite a few upsets in the order. Reliability is the most obvious concern. The, the cars, the engine and power unit is, is tremendously complicated. Um, and whilst a road car manufacturer, it could be argued there are some quite complicated hybrid cars out on the marketplace. Those cars have had the luxury of years of development before they, they come to market. We've got um, three tests, so 12 days or whatever that is, and, and then we're off to the first race. So it's a, it's a very compressed development schedule um, with something so complicated that is going to bring a lot of pressures and a lot of problems and probably quite a few breakdowns. So I think reliability will be a big issue at the start of the season. Equally, everybody finding their feet in terms of how to use the engines, um, how to best cope with the total fuel limit, how to um, cope with the aerodynamic changes that we've had, how to get all that to work with the, the new tyres. The tyres have been made harder over the winter to, to cope with the extra torque of the new engines. So all those things I think um, make for quite an unpredictable melting pot in the early races. I think Daniel's um, through the junior formulas and then the last two years at, at STR has um, shown a very good pace. He's a naturally fast driver. Um, we listened to his feedback when he, he drove our car at the Silverstone tyre test last season um, and gave good feedback. So that's all very positive. Obviously, now it's a matter of team and driver work, getting to know each other. Um, working together and, and seeing how he gets on, how his, how his feedback is. Um, hopefully it will complement Sebastian's just as Mark's did last year or previous seasons. So it's, a, it's a, a slight journey into the unknown because although he's a, been a member of the Red Bull family for some years, he's been in a, a different team so we ha don't know him as intimately as uh, when he's one of our own drivers. So um, hopefully it will be all good, looking forward to it. Have I enjoyed our designing the RB10? Yes, I have. It's, um, it's been a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, long hours for everybody in the factory. It was a very compressed design schedule because of the fact that we'd chosen to continue to develop RB9 in our championship battle quite late into the season. That really put the pressure on for all of us to to um, hit the deadlines. 
Um, but the pressure can be a good thing. It, it can be stimulating. Um, it doesn't always seem so when you're kind of <laughs> leaving the factory at some antisocial hour in the evening and uh, gulping down a, a quick supper before going to bed. But um, sometimes um, creativity comes out of those, those high pressure environments. So um, we shall see. It's certainly been a busy winter. And now it's uh, that time of trepidation where we wait to see does our car perform as our simulation tools suggest it does or are there some nasty shocks that we haven't properly understood. What's everybody else been up to over the winter? Um, when you have a big regulation change like this, then of course we all individually as teams go away and do our bit and, and do the best job we can. But we've got absolutely no idea where that leaves us relative to our competitors. So um, as I say, it'll be a, a slightly nervous time seeing where we are in the, in the um, upcoming tests. Obviously the first win in China was very special. Um, we'd had a, the big regulation change over the previous winter, which uh, we had managed to read quite well. And so we suddenly in the unusual position where ourselves and Braun, who haven't been um, regular front runners previously, were, were now the regular front runners. So to, to win a race, the first race is always a special moment. To win the championship, both championships um, the following year, I think was also magical. It, probably in many ways, particularly the drivers, the constructors was looking reasonable. So when we won the constructors in Brazil, the penultimate race, that was a great feeling. Um, but I think because one week later we had the, the drivers still to settle, then it didn't really sink in and we didn't really appreciate that success because the job wasn't finished. Um, when he managed the double at the end, then that was that was um, an amazing feeling to have done that after so short a time um, to have beaten the world's best. I think uh, that that will always go down. And then after that, really to stay at the top over, over the coming three seasons um, to show that we went to kind of a one-year flash in the pan.